It's not too often that we hear a drummer or a bassist nail a performance in one shot, beginning to end. So as an engineer, we usually edit from another take, or we'll punch in the performer at certain points to get the performance right. Um, But unless the performer is a top-notch studio musician, chances are the groove is going to vary, and it's going to create a semi-disjointed performance. But in Logic Pro, I can find the take that I like with the best overall feel and groove to it, and then seamlessly correct any timing mistakes and uh, tighten it up all together. So I opened up here a recording and track uh, last summer of a drummer and bassist uh, performing together over dummy tracks that they're referencing through headphones. Uh, Let's take a quick listen to that. So they're playing together all right. There's a couple points where it kind of becomes disjointed. Uh, Nothing critical, but since it's the drum and bass, it's really important to get that right. The guitars, the vocals, they can dance around the tempo, dance around the melody, but it's really critical that the bass and drum form a uh, solid foundation. Let's listen to that one more time. You hear the bass hits a little bit early and kind of doesn't keep up with the drums. Drum's a little bit sloppy. So let's go through in Logic Pro and let's tighten this up and let's quantize uh, the drums and quantize the bass and uh, see if we can get them in in tempo here. Uh, The first thing we're going to do is click on the button here called Flex. Flex is Logic's uh, way to uh, stretch and compress audio uh, to have it match uh, within the the tempo. and that's the first thing I should talk about. The tempo is very, very important. If you listen here, they're performing with the click track perfectly. And that's going to be really critical because Logic is going to reference any edits we make off of the tempo that we've set down here. So 160 beats per, se- per minute is what we're working with. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open up my mixer panel. And I'm going to um, select all of my drums right here. Four channels, overhead left, overhead right, kick and snare. And I'm going to put them into a group. Let's just say group two. Um, look at our group settings and we're going to realize that we want uh, phase locked audio together because what's that, what that's going to do, it's going to make sure that all four of these tracks are edited perfectly together. That if one moves, they're all going to move um, sample accurately. So we'll close that down. They're now in a group. We're going to select this into slicing. You'll realize that this only appeared once we clicked on flex. So now we have slicing. And this is probably going to be your best option when uh, editing your drums. You know, you got a lot of different uh, algorithms that you can use for determining how, how we want to uh, time correct this. Uh, for the bass, we're going to be using monophonic, but for drums, let's stick with slicing. So the first thing you want to do is select which tracks you're going to reference. Since these are all going to be edited together, you want to find tracks that best represent the beat. And so for this case, I want to use the kick and the snare and deselect the overhead. And you'll look in here as we zoom in that it put a little marker on each transient hit. So on the kick, we have a hit here and here. And on the snare, we have a hit. Um, But we want to go and we want to clean these up. We want to clean up the references that Logic automatically finds. Because it does its best, but it never does it perfectly. Because you'll see there's some stray marks around here that make no sense. Um, So let's deselect kick. So all we're doing is referencing snare. And you'll realize Logic put one here. um, And here, which isn't really referencing the snare track at all. So let's double click this and that opens up our sample editor. And if this is not selected, then select it. This uh, helps us to adjust um, the threshold in which Logic is going to be scanning this to find the the transient responses here. And let's just click the minus button until we see... Again, you see this right here? That just disappeared. We can increase it to get it back, decrease it, until we don't see any of these phantom ones. So let's decrease it until we get rid of that. And we have one at the end. And let's scan it again. That looks pretty good. I think Logic did a good job of finding uh, all the transients that we want and none that we don't. So again, let's select our kick, 
deselect snare and do the same thing with the kick. Double click on the kick track to open up the sample editor. And we see on the kick track there's uh, one right here. Let's deselect until that goes away. That looks good. Scan this way. It looks fine. And this may seem tedious, but you only have to do it for these two tracks, and chances are it's going to do a great job of uh, connecting all the other ones. Uh, so let's call that good. And again, let's reselect our snare track. And now we're set for doing some quantizing. Now that Logic has all of its reference points, it knows exactly where to start stretching and compressing on those marks. And again, our kick and our snare are reference points, and the overheads are related to that. So we're going to open up our inspector now and click on quantize. And in this case, let's start quantizing all these transients hits to find the closest eighth note. And you'll see that the orange represents stretching, the green represents compressing of the audio. And if we listen to that, I'm going to mute the bass. See, that's right on beat. Very tight. And you'll also notice that Logic does a great job of not introducing artifacts or make it sound like it's really being uh, time corrected. Very good algorithms that they use. Um, but one thing I always like to do, I never like to put it at 100%. And what I mean by that is have it lock it exactly to beat. No, no actual musician will perform perfectly on beat. And if they do, as humans, we don't like that sound. We like a little bit of variation. We like a swing. Um, so we come down here to cue strength, and that shows, or that gives us the option of how much quantization we want. So I just told 80%. So get 80% of the way to the eighth note. Um, you can even go all the way down to 1%. And you'll start seeing, you know, our stretching and compressing starts to decrease. Um, 75 80% I really like, that sounds really good. Sounds natural, gives a nice solid swing. Still allows the performer to kind of move around the tempo. So now we got our drum sounding really good. Let's mute that and let's solo up our bass. And for that, like I mentioned, we're going to be using monophonic as opposed to slicing. Uh, monophonic works good for instruments that are monophonic. Um, so let's double select that. And we'll realize and notice in here that not many of these uh, transients are being affected, and we want a lot more. Like, we, we're going to want one here, here, and here. So let's just start boosting that up. Okay, we're starting to see some more. Let's see, I want to get a couple down here. And again, this is automatic. Manual takes a little bit more time. You can come in here and write and create your own markers. I always find that Logic does a good job. You don't need all of them. You just want to tidy up some of the critical hits, like this one here, this one here, um, where we earlier heard. This is where the bass was starting to get disjointed here, and I'm glad that each of these hits um, are, are being recognized. So our transient markers look good. Let's close that down, and let's perform our eighth note quantization. And you'll see it did some serious stretching and compressing over here, which was our error, you know, error prone region. And I think that looks good. Let's unmute it and just te uh, check it out and test it, see if it doesn't sound unnatural, because that's the key. If it sounds computer um, edited, people aren't going to like it. No, I think that sounds great. And when you're done with doing your um, flex timing, you can come right up and deselect flex and go right back to your editing of your plugins and levels and panning. And that is a brief overview of logic using flex and quantizing your audio.